two, three. But you're going to try again. No, I just want to know, because you had said that we would be very, very surprised. Yeah. And that was what you gave us. Were you referring to the Pam turning Tara? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Right? That was all I wanted. I know you won't do spoilers. I thought that was unexpected, because I tried to kill her the whole season before. Right? Yeah, it seems a little odd. Right, it's unexpected in the regular world. In the True Blood world, it's more normal. Right. So, speaking of True Blood, every year Pam's wit gets a little sharper yeah. and a little quicker. Yeah. And do you have any role in this, or is this all writers? That's 100% the writers. I have not changed one word. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really a great position to be in where you're handed those lines. Thank you. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah. You know, you had yeah, the wardrobe, the writing is really all these wonderful people. Okay. Well, and this is a little bit off topic, but do you consider vampires your favorite supernatural creature? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, have a, a lot of fun making fun of the other supers on the show because. You know, I just think that once their superpowers kick in, they go back to their trailer and the animal wranglers bring in the dogs or the owls or the, you know? So I feel like once things get super, I still get to play the part, which I think is really fun. I'd hate to have to hand it over to, I mean, I, I love animals, but you know, I'd hate to like go, and then, uh, I, I, I would actually never get to be super. Okay. Um, so, vampires aside, what superpower would you want to have? Um, I had a discussion with Sam Trammell about this. Was it Sam? And uh, because a lot of people pick invisible and or flying, like those, it comes down to invisible or flying a lot, and. I took invisible because, well, I was wondering if when you're invisible you'd leave a fingerprint. And we decided no. And then, so that's why I took invisible, because I could do anything I wanted. I think it was Sam who said, so you're picking basic lawlessness. <laughs> because you want to commit crime. And I said, yeah. <laughs> So I think that would be really great, because you could steal and kill, like, <laughs> only bad people. So you're David at the bad people? Yeah, I'd, I'd take care of business, in a Pam fashion. <laughs> so you're aiming at the bad people with your superpower, but you keep being cast as evil characters. Yeah. Are you afraid of being typecast at all, or are you choosing these evil roles on purpose? I, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years, and True Blood is now, we're five years into it, and for the first 15, I wasn't ever cast as somebody who had any edge whatsoever. And I was enjoying playing the dumb blonde role. You know, I really, admire what Jason Stackhouse is doing, what Ryan Quantin is doing, because I look at that and go, oh, he's, he's good, he's on it. Like, I, I played that role for a long time, and he's just subtly brilliant, and so opposite the character. So 
the fact that now I'm typecast as something that I wasn't allowed to do makes me love this typecasting. And there may be a point where I'll want to do something else, but I've had so many varied roles in my career that I'm okay, I'm okay with it. I, I haven't been stuck here for 20 years. Hey, good. Um, at this point, if it's on this side tonight, our line is over here. If you all want to start lining up to ask your questions, I'll talk to her for a couple minutes more, and then it's your turn. Sound good? Um, is your husband with you today? He's not. He's back taking care of the dogs and the cats. Good husband. Well, do you ever yes. join? Oh, sorry. Go. You had a better question. He just said I have a very good husband, which I do. Do you ever join your husband when he gives his performances? Like, do you sing or play tambourine or anything? <laughs> or the triangle. Um, I don't. I I can sing in a limited fashion, so I've I've in, it, doing it live would really be frightening for me. But I have thought about doing backup or a duet or something on this on his next CD because. You know, it'd be a controlled environment where you could get it just right. But I've brought it up a few times, and he goes, hmm. <laughs> and then I don't hear anything about it again. So I thought, yeah, he doesn't really like ask me to come to the set. You know, and maybe I could be an extra in one of your scenes. I, I'd probably have the same reaction. <laughs> so I mean, so far, we're keeping our careers separate. Okay. How about over here? Um, my question is, uh, in what way do you feel that your character has developed the most over the course of the entire series? I think that the big general arc has been to go from having no sentimentality or soft side at all to having deep vulnerability in moments, mainly with Eric. But that has been really amazing to have her underbelly exposed. Hello. Hi. Um, I just want to say that my favorite Pam moment was when you said blah blah vampire emergency blah. And, yeah. that was incredible and, hilarious. and I was just wondering what was your favorite line or favorite scene to do? Um, you know what's funny about the lines that catch on? I don't actually know when we're filming them that I'm doing a good job or that that's going to be a line that people will say back to me. I. It's really, I remember shooting that day, and I kept coming in and doing it. And nobody said a word to me on the set, not the director, Alex, nobody thought there was anything <coughs> exceptional. So then when I do the conventions, and people request it for me to write it, I think, oh, okay, I guess I did that one right. And then I go, went back to the writers, and I was telling that writer, you know, that line was, is really, that was a good one, good job. And he said, what line? What line? I said, blah, blah, vampire emergency, blah. He goes, oh, right, yeah. And then Alex said, when did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it's so interesting being on this set because if you're doing something well, no one says anything because the day is about fixing problems. So the directors just, if they say nothing to you, you assume that you're fine. But that means that you never get feedback. So when I'm trying to make a line land, like I love this line, I know it's one of those lines, I want it to be good, I'll say, am I funny? <laughs> and they go, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> because everyone's so tired. So it's interesting to hear back. And so for me, filming that, I couldn't feel anything. You know, I, I, didn't, I was just doing my job and hitting my mark. And 
And, but there were other scenes that I could feel in the moment. And those were, there are always scenes where I'm one-on-one -on -one talking to somebody. Because the big, huge scenes take so long to shoot, and there's so much going on that it's just, you know, sort of this endless, it's weird, it's like Groundhog Day, like nothing ever progresses, and you know, you just keep going back into the same room, and, but there is a day with Stephen Moyer when uh, Pam and Bill are in his office when her face is rotting, and they put all my scenes with him on one day, so I spent the whole day just with one other actor, and th that felt really, we had so much fun, and then also, I've had a couple of scenes like that with Eric, Pam and Eric, and one of them was, that I could really feel, was being released. That scene was so sad to me. And it was sad reading it, and it was sad shooting it, and it was sad rehearsing it, it was sad at the table read. Like that, you know, we could really feel. It was sad watching it. It was sad, wasn't it? It was totally heartbreaking. So, not that it was, fun, but it's rare that the experience of shooting the show is anything related to the feeling of watching it. And, you know, the big, exciting, dramatic scenes are tedious to film. Boring, tiring, tedious. So it's ironic, you know? And the one-on-one -on -one scenes really feel great. Hi, thanks for Hi. coming. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say you do the evil lady so well. Thank you. Like, my hat's off to you because I didn't know you did dumb long rolls before. I did. There's a lot of versatility going on there. Yes. <laughs> um, and my question was, I know you work with a lot of like really awesome actors like Alexander Skarsgård and attractive. Um, so I was just wondering if there were any like funny cast moments you had because I know you've been working together for yeah. like, five years, right? Yeah. We have endlessly funny moments, and then when we're together again, we reminisce about them. Remember in La Puente, when you tripped, or whatever it is. And, uh, there are some that are exceedingly funny, and I just got a text from one of our directors who said, how are you, miss you, and remember in season three when that stunt girl, she was supposed to run uh, let's see, who threw me across the room? So, Bill and Pam had a fight, and I collateral silver him, and then I'm on him, and then Suki gets me with a chain around my neck, and then Yvetta, the stripper Yvetta gets me. But somehow, I get thrown across the room, and I'm supposed to hit the stunt pole with my back. So the poor stunt girl had to run across the room, turn her back, fling herself through the air, and hit the pole. So we're watching it on the monitor. <laughs> and she kept missing the pole. So what we'd see, <laughs> we'd see this person fly through the frame and land, and, and land somewhere. She kept missing the pole, <laughs> take after take. And to us, it became <laughs> exceedingly funny. <laughs> Just watch her fly through the frame. Nope. Okay, going again. <laughs> it was, and it, things just become remarkably hilarious. And we were just shooting something with a lot of stunts. Um, and I shouldn't say who it is, but there was something that kept going wrong, and then it's usually stunt related, but the Moon Goddess, season four. So the vampires are outside Moon Goddess, so there's me, Eric, Bill, Jessica, and Jason. And we're getting pulled into the force field. This was probably the funniest thing, uh, to be there. I don't know if it's funny in a story, but the director came out and said, so let's start shooting where you're being pulled into the force field. So you're being pulled in and you, you 
you're going to die when you hit this thing, but, and you're resisting, but you, you can't, you're losing. And I'm like, uh, so do you have any idea how I'm supposed to like physically accomplish this? <laughs> and then Michael, the director, said, no. <laughs> and I look, and Stephen and Alex are already looking at me like this is going to be funny. <laughs> and I said, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Before we do the first take, let's have a pact that we won't make fun of each other. <laughs> because we need to have like a safe space to try this. And Alex and Steven said, no way. <laughs> and what they knew, and I realized imminently, was that they were about 10 feet from the camera. But they had placed me back by the van, ooh, about 50 yards. So I'm gonna have to do whatever this is. <laughs> for the first time in front of people, like I didn't practice at home, for like 50 yards. <laughs> so they went, oh! and took Alex with his long legs, took like two steps, and was off camera. <laughs> and they just went, step, step, and turn around. <laughs> and they're like this. So there's the camera, Eric's face, and Steven's face, and then Jessica. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> like, like trying to figure out, like, you know, men in black, you know, when that alien inhabits that guy's body, or like, and <laughs> it didn't go so well for me. <laughs> and I just see Stephen, Alex, and Jessica, and Jessica um, Deborah just dying laughing. And I get halfway and I go, come on, you guys! <laughs> and the director goes, cut! And the entire crew, which is like 50 people, dies laughing. <laughs> the director comes out, he can't speak, he's laughing so hard. He's doubled over and he finally goes, I won't use that. <laughs> Stephen, Alex, and Deborah realized they could relive it. They could watch it again and replay it. <laughs> so they go, let's watch it again! <laughs> and they ran over to Video Village and asked the guy to play it again, to play it back. <laughs> and I had to watch them like... <laughs> and still, they go, hey, Kristen, how's it going? <laughs> and I come in in the morning. So they ended up realizing this isn't going to work, so yeah, a human body actually needs something to fight against. You can't fight against air and make it look normal. So they put ropes around our waist and got the biggest like grips and transport guys and they pulled us. And we fought really hard against that. And then special effects took out the ropes, so that's what you saw. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. You are my favorite vampire of all time. Everything I've ever seen, Thanks. you are my absolute favorite. Thanks. So anyway, I wanted to say of all the episodes that have aired, what was your favorite one to film? Your favorite episode with Pam? Yeah. Um, it's funny because, again, the experience of filming it is so different than the experience of watching it. And you know how that is. I mean, if you see yourself in a vacation video or hear your voice in an answering machine, you know, you're like, do I sound like that? You know, so it, it, it's the same for actors. Is you look at it and you're like, huh. Oh, that's what I, I look like doing stuff from the outside. You know? So I enjoy watching the other scenes better, but um, so I kind of, in my memory, love the ones where we reminisce like that. Where we're like, remember the Puente? And you did that silly walk. And then, and we have so much fun. That whole sequence was five nights. And that happens at the end of the year. The big scenes will be 
a week or so to shoot just like a four minute scene and we're all together so I got into acting because I needed to find a way to feed myself but also I once I got on a set I just love being on a set so I think a lot of people would want to be an actor it looks from the outside like it's very glamorous and you get big houses and things and you walked on red carpets. All of that is 2% um, and of it and also it's not the day, you know what I mean? Like all of your jobs come down to the room you go into and the people that you spend 40 hours a week with. It can be hell or it can be amazing and I just love being on a set. So a lot of times those big five day sequences, when we're all together, we laugh and laugh and laugh. And, the, and I'm so lucky. I don't know about the other worlds, but the vampire world is awesome. <laughs> and you know, when we, I get to be with Ryan or some of this guest cast, oh my God, these are some of the funniest people. And Ryan loves to try to make the other actors genuinely laugh and ruin the take. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, in that La Puente sequence, and this happens often, he will, we can't look at him. So when the camera is like on, you know, it'll be over his shoulder onto me or over my shoulder onto him, when we can get away with it, because he's so funny, he's here, we look over there, because we're like, oh my god, and I'm supposed to be being mad, and he is genuinely just hysterical, and I think laughter is just such a pleasure, life is full of so much stress, and so those are my favorite moments I'll remember, yeah. Fantastic and gorgeous. Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, but my question is, since Pam is all fancy and pastels and all that, what's your favorite color and is it the same as Pam? I um, really love pink as well. And, but I, this, I don't even know if black is a color, right? Isn't it like weird they tell you once in a while white or black? It's a shame. It's a shade. It's, uh, I've gotten to like this black thing. I don't know what, it just, maybe it's easy, it goes with everything, or it just looks cool on camera. But I've gotten into all these various, like, vinyls, and it's just the most fascinating world that I'm in with Pam. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for coming to David. Yes, thank you. And again, I love you both in and out of costume. What was that last part? That I love you in and out of costume. Oh, thank you. So my question is, is if the directors came to you and let you have one change completely yours on the show, what difference would you change? Um, probably, it, the first we'd have to change the name would be like the Pam Show, <laughs> right? And then True Blood, you know. Like, no, um, I mean, I, there's been things I've thought at times. Mainly, I've loved. Not even mainly. I think I've just loved everything. But you know, last year it was funny for me to not be in with my buddies who were all of the authority. So I'm there in Fantasia, you know, getting to know Rutina, which was really awesome. We ended up having a lot of fun working together. But I would, you know, in my, you know, my break, I'd go over to the authority set, hey guys, what are you doing? And I'd see them having a ball, laughing with each other, you know. Like, um, <laughs> do you guys miss me? Huh? What? Do you miss me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We right? You got you guys. Kristen's here. 
So there have been some things that I thought, oh, I want to be included in that. They went down last year, that authority crowd went down to New Orleans to shoot for a few days. And we shoot in LA and within an hour of LA. And I thought, oh, I kind of wanted to be part of that. So I would probably write every scene with, I like being with my people that I know, you know, I have every scene be Bill and Suki and Eric and Pam and now Tara and then I'd throw in Jason and Deborah. So yeah, I'd be the vampire show. <laughs> and Suki and I. <laughs> I love you as Pam, but I also loved you as Maleficent. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Blonde. Blonde's had more fun. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if they're going to do any more backstory on Maleficent, because you get this little hint of who she is, but right. not how she got there. Yep. I'm wondering, too. I have no idea, and but I did see something on Facebook or Twitter, I can't remember. I was trying to read it on my phone somewhere, and so I didn't get the whole story, but I clicked on the link and it was something about the creator's mention that Maleficent and her backstory could happen. I don't know if anyone saw that, but I was happy to see it. You know, I know they're done filming for this year, but hopefully next year. Because I, I really, I was flying up to Vancouver on the weekend to shoot the last scene and I hadn't gotten through the whole thing because once I, again, you know, when you're a super and you turn into a dragon, I'm home and then some animator somewhere is doing it. So I didn't actually read the part that was, you know, the, the guy animating it. And so I think the night before I went to the set, I'm like, holy shit, they killed the dragon. Wait, I'm the dragon. <laughs> Are they killing me? And uh, so I asked the creator, and he was very vague. Oh, you know, you know, don't worry. And, and so I don't know how that works. Then the mist came in, which I hoped changed my death. I thought it was too early to kill off an infamous character like Maleficent, just, you know, even if I didn't play her, right? We all agree. Yeah, so I hope it happens. Thank you.